Hey guys, my name is Sid. Welcome to another tech vlog. Today we're going to be talking about the state of the Mac and how things are going to be changing in the next couple of months. Apple just refreshed pretty much all their MacBooks in the last few months. The 16 inch MacBook came out in November and recently got a graphics card update. We got the new 2020 MacBook Air, which came down in price and I think is a steal of a computer right now. And we also got the new MacBook Pro 13 inch with the updated processors, the 10th generation Intel processors inside them. So overall, I would have generally recommended anybody to go out and buy a MacBook right now. But after watching last week's WWDC, I kind of have a change in opinion. I would say definitely wait and see what Apple is up to. Because if you guys don't know, Apple is transitioning to their own processors. Apple's been doing this for a while with their iPhones and their iPads. And you can see the amazing performance that they're getting out of these machines. So the iPad Pro with the A12Z processor inside it, which is developed by Apple and is running on an ARM architecture, is outperforming a 13-inch MacBook Pro. It was kind of speculated for a while that Apple would shift to their own processors and finally last week at wwdc they actually made it official apple is going to be transitioning all their computers to the arm architecture within the next two years there's two things that apple is claiming that this architectural change is going to do first of all improve battery life we can already see the performance you get out of an ipad which lasts for about eight to ten hours giving you that consistent performance which has a much smaller battery than a macbook pro which will give you five to six hours of battery life so right there you'll be able to see that using an arm processor inside a macbook is going to give you much better battery life the second thing is in terms of performance now the reason the iphone works so well or the ipad works so well even though the specs on paper don't sound as good is because they have really strong hardware and software integration since they write their own operating system and they can build their own hardware that really gives you a performance advantage unlike what can really be done on the PC side of things. You can kind of see this in video game consoles as well. Like for example, I just finished playing The Last of Us 2 and that is running on a PS4 which is coming from 2013 and the graphical performance of that game is absolutely outstanding. It looks like a next generation game. The reason they're able to do that is because Sony controls the hardware as well as the software that's running on the PlayStation 4 and is really able to optimize it for the function of playing games. In the same way, Apple can use their custom silicon along with their new operating system which is called macOS Big Sur and it's finally got a version update by the way it's going from 10.15 now to 11. they've redesigned the operating system but what i think is most interesting about it is the way that they've kind of made it look a lot like ios which leads me to believe that apple is considering making touchscreen macs in the future now if you look closely at mac os big sur it's taken a lot of design elements from the iPad. For example, if you look at the notification center, the way that the menus look and the toggles look, all look very touch centric. So I would bet that the first ARM MacBook that comes out is probably gonna have a touch screen and they're probably gonna ditch the touch bar on future Mac Pros as well. So um, that's a prediction from my side that we're going to see Macs with touchscreens coming very soon. The second thing that leads me to believe that we're going to get touchscreen MacBooks is because every single iOS and iPad app is going to be able to run natively on these new Mac computers with ARM processors inside them. So I don't really see how Apple would allow something like that without the touch input that's required for these a lot of these apps to function correctly. So my guess is, is that we're probably going to get some kind of touch screen on the new MacBooks, at least, if not for the desktop computers. If I was Apple in the transition process, I would hit the laptops at first because that's where you're going to see the most amount of gains. I imagine you have a MacBook Air right now, which has 12 hours of battery life already. But now you switch that to an ARM processor, you're probably going to get better performance out of it. And you're going to be able to stretch that battery life maybe to 15 to 20 hours now that would be pretty amazing to do and imagine if that macbook air also has a touch screen now so it's going to be almost like an ipad as well as macbook air with 20 hours of battery life i think that's going to make an outstanding computer and it differentiates the mac even more from the world of pc because 
you know, since they're running their own custom silicon, they can get a lot more performance out of it. The other thing that Apple promised is that every single app that's existing in the current Intel processor world of Mac should also be able to run with the Macs with the ARM processors inside them because they have something called Rosetta 2, which will automatically convert the Intel x86 architecture into the new ARM processor. So you shouldn't really lose compatibility with any apps, but you might have some kind of performance limitations. Now, most of the apps I use on my Mac are Apple built apps. Like one of the big ones for me is Final Cut Pro. They've already ported over to Apple Silicon. Adobe's whole suite is already going to be ported over to an Apple native Silicon. And the way that Apple has provided the tools for developers to quickly be able to just export their projects as ARM projects is pretty interesting. The fact that you'll be able to run any iOS or uh, iPad app on your Mac is going to give you a huge selection of amazingly built apps and uh, you know just improve the amount of things that you can do on your Mac. So my prediction is that by the end of this year we're going to be seeing an updated MacBook Air kind of device which is going to have the Apple custom silicon Probably early next year, we'll see a revised 13-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro. And then maybe after that, we'll see a new iMac and a Mac Pro. Um, and somewhere in between there, we'll see the Mac Mini get refreshed. Kind of a difficult time to be in the Apple e ecosystem. I was really looking forward to buy a new iMac. I'm using a 2013 iMac. I mean, it runs really well, but you know, I can't really do 4K on it. And now since I use this setup, I do a lot of local recording. It's very CPU intensive. So um, I need something a bit more powerful. I was hoping to get a new iMac this year, but it looks like I'll probably have to wait. And I'm quite excited to see what kind of performance these new Apple devices are able to get. Uh, I'm sure Apple wouldn't transition from Intel if they were giving you an inferior experience. It's an exciting time to be a fan of Apple products or if you're in the Apple ecosystem, because this is gonna be a big jump in terms of performance and battery life and many things. But if you need a Mac right now, like if you need to buy an Apple computer, Apple has said they're gonna to continue to support the Intel computers for a while. They're gonna be launching some new Intel computers this year as well. So we should see support for a long amount of time. And I would hope so for all those people who bought a Mac Pro this year, uh, you know, those things can go up to $50,000. So I'm sure Apple's gonna support them for a while. Any guys, let me know what you thought about this video. Do you think Apple's going in the right direction, making their own CPUs for their computers? Um, if you like this video, hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to watch more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.